Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Scents of South Jersey with me, Kellen, and uh, we're gonna do a fragrance review today. We're gonna do a fragrance review on um, uh, a fragrance that I've had in my collection now for a few months. I've been kind of waiting until it's a little colder to start wearing it, and I've been wearing it all week, and I've been really excited for this review. Is This is uh, one out of the 80s, uh, came out in 1987. It's classified as an oriental fragrance, and it's by the house of Ted Lapidus, and this is none other than Lapidus for all. So um, a lot to say about this fragrance. What we'll do, as always, we'll look at the box and bottle presentation. I'll take a look at some of the other items I have that match this scent and their presentation. We'll go over the notes, which there are a ton. Um, I'll talk about its performance. And then I'll give my thoughts on the fragrance, you know, when and how and where to wear it, etc. And then we'll give it the overall rating. So uh, without waiting any longer, let's take a look at the fragrance box. So we'll take a look at the front. Sorry for the glare. We have um, Lapidus Pour Home, uh, black letter and gold frame box here, uh, Eau de Toilette. Uh, and you can see the, see the pattern here, you know, it looks like some sort of crashing wave. But to me, my first thought of what that looks like is more of a marble stone. Very, 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 very of its era. Marble kind of uh, stone, almost like a nice granite countertop or something like that. On the top, you really don't have much going on, just that marble pattern. Same thing on the sides, keeping that kind of a whole wrap around the whole box here. Got the, the sticker here, very similar to Bogart. I think these are made by the same company. This might be a higher end, I actually not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure the address and some company brand information that's on the back here um, is the same as some of the Jacques Bogart fragrances. But this is from the house of Ted Lapidus and Ted Lapidus was his own uh, clothing designer before it became fragrance designer. I'm um, on the back again, some ingredient and brand information made in France. Uh, on, on the bottom you have your um, barcode and some other maybe batch code or sticker. Uh, some brand information there for Ted Lapidus too. So um, after shave, Ted Lapidus after shave. I actually found this one on eBay and I was able to get it because you know I like to have the matching type of uh, things to go along with the fragrance. So this is the gray, the gray marble theme. It's almost virtually the identical box. Same type of thing. This is just a um, 50 ml. It's 1.66 ounces as opposed to 3.3. Uh, they also make two other items, still gray, but not the marble. They have an, uh, let's see, this is aftershave balm, and then they have a body wash as well, too. These can be found pretty inexpensive, and they both smell awesome. I have not used the aftershave or aftershave balm yet. I've only sampled it out of the bottle and the tube, but the shower gel is really, really nice, too. It's definitely got a good scent, very, very similar to the fragrance. A lot of times you can get body washes, and they're really just not that close to the actual cologne, but that one is. So let's take a look at the bottle. The bottle for the um, aftershave we're not gonna look at. It's identical to this, just smaller and has a splash top where this does not. So um, the bottle, it's glass, it's really cool. It's like a tower, I could definitely see this sitting on a, I know, a, a sink countertop or shelf. Um, it's got that gray look here, Lapidus Pour Homme, Eau de Toilette, uh, Ted Lapidus Paris, um, and it says, of course, 3.3 um, fluid ounces, you know, 100 ml. Uh, it's got this kind of ribbed, Pattern going all the way down the side, um, flat back here, what it say in the bottom there, 82%, and maybe like a batch batch code right there in the bottle. On the glass, you got the bottom here, you got embossed glass, made in France, Ted Lapidus. So it's a high quality bottle, it's not just a sticker. And then on the grating here, you can see a gold insert, and then they have this gold wrap around, um, almost like neck to, to, the, to the bottom of the neck of the fragrance here too. Built-in sprayer, as many of these 80s fragrances are. Um, the top, you got, that looks like what the Ted Lapidus symbol. Distribution, I'm actually gonna spray it on my skin because this is my scent of the day today, so I don't need to spray it anywhere else. Very good distribution, huge cloud. Man, this is an incredible fragrance. This really is, uh, I, I don't wanna get into my opinion just yet. Hang on a second. So we're gonna talk about the notes. There's a ton of notes in here. A lot of these 80s powerhouse fragrances are loaded with notes. Um, I'm gonna read them to you. I had to write them down because there's so many of them. Then I'm gonna talk to you about the notes that I find most prominent in the top, middle, and base of the fragrance. So we have Artemisia, pineapple, juniper, berries, basil, bergamot, uh, lemon, and lavender. Uh, the middle, we have pine tree, honey, orris root, jasmine, caraway, uh, petit grain, lily of the valley, rose, Brazilian rose wood, and incense. And the base, we have sandalwood, tonka bean, amber, patchouli, musk, oak moss, cedar, and tobacco. So on the top, I get a fresh bergamot. I get, and some lavender as well too in there with some lemon. There's definitely a citrus burst in, this, in, the, in the beginning. Um, it says pineapple, but I'm not sure if I detect it. Um, 
maybe after wearing it longer, you know, once this becomes in a regular rotation, because again, I've only recently started wearing this because I've waited and waited until it's been um, cooler weather, because this is just not something you wear in the summertime or the heat, in my opinion, at least. Um, the middle of the fragrance, I get rose and you get honey. You get a real sweet honey at some point. It's a heavy fragrance. Uh, the base, the sandalwood, musk, and the oak moss, and amber, I think, are most prominent. But definitely the musk, oak moss, and sandalwood, those three really come out strong in the base. And uh, they're among my favorite notes anyway. So, you know, a lot of notes, a lot of ingredients in these types of powerhouse fragrances. The performance of this fragrance is incredible. Uh, it's easily a 12-hour fragrance. I smell it the next day um, as, as when I'm wearing it. It sticks to clothing like glue. So you can really get away with two, three, four sprays max, and this will last 12 hours on your skin. At least it does for me. So performance is incredible. Projection is great. The first three hours, I think, you know, you can fill a room with this fragrance. The sillage is excellent. You're going to leave a scent trail. The, I would say, length of scent in the second half, it's going to be an arm's length, distance, and a half. So people that are close to you will still be able to smell this fragrance. Uh, the last maybe two to three hours of the fragrance, it'll be in your personal state space, but you're still going to notice it. It's not going to just disappear or become a, a skin scent. And even at that point, you just maybe just, you know, uh, waving your wrist by your nose, you'll still be able to pick up some notes of this fragrance. So you really can't say anything bad about the performance for Lapidus Porum. Um, so <laughs> this fragrance really smells of the era. It is a clean, fresh smell, but also has a dirty vibe, musky vibe, sweaty vibe to it as well, too. It, it really, um, I saw a couple other reviewers and someone mentioned, I think it was Mr. Smelly, who I've been a huge fan of. He called it locker room fresh. And I understand what he meant by that. I could smell, it smells almost like a, a clean deodorant, um, but not the blue deodorant, the antiperspirant, the white stick. That's the kind of vibe I get after a while. Um, it definitely is, is of the era of the 80s. Um, you know, it can be a little bit cloying for someone who may not be into fragrances, so I don't think that this is for everybody. Uh, Season-wise, definitely cooler weather. I'd say late fall, winter, maybe you can get away with a light wearing of it in the early springtime, but I don't think it would be good in the heat because of how powerful and heavy this fragrance is. Um, the, the dirty vibe to it can kind of be related to like a lower end Koros or Koros from what I understand and, and that review is coming soon too, I can't wait. But that might be the top shelf uh, of a fragrance in this category where this might be the, you know, fragrance that is much less expensive, uh, you know, a cheaper alternative option. So if you don't have this, I would say get it. It is great. I really like it. But again, it's something that you're going to have to blind buy because I don't think you're going to find this in stores. I don't think you can get samples of it. But thankfully, it's inexpensive. It's not expensive um, at all. So, and what you get, the performance and what the smell is, I think it's a great buy. I think that, you know, again, you have to enjoy fragrances. You have to like heavy. You like to have like musk, um, some sweet, fresh, and a little bit of floral in there too. There's a lot going on in this fragrance. But it definitely is um, is one that I think you should have in your collection for sure. I don't know, you know, again, if it's going to please everybody. But uh, as far as where I would wear this, I would wear it going out. I would wear it in the daytime or the nighttime. I would wear this at a bar. I would wear this at a club. As if, you know, let's just say you're at a club and you're getting close to people. People are up, you know, how it gets shoulder to shoulder at certain places. And it may get kind of uh, hot in there. But at the same time, you know, this is something that would, would probably go well with that. Um, and hot in a room, not so much like summertime heat, but you know, nightclub, I think it's a little bit different. So, you know, this would last, people would smell, you'd smell good the whole time. And this would be something that I think would be attractive. And I think is uh, a, a scent that you could wear out. I don't think you could wear it to work because it can be kind of polarizing. I think that if you wore it to work, it might be um, a little overpowering, especially in the confined spaces where people aren't expecting to kind of run into anyone wearing a fragrance like that. Um, so date night, bar, club, you know, in the daytime if you're going out, um, you know, I think it's pretty versatile in that respect, but I, I wouldn't really wear it to work. Uh, and I wouldn't really wear this just hanging around my house. I would wear this, you know, if I'm exiting like a full day's of worth of activity, but not just sitting around because again, it's very strong. So let's go over the overall rating for Lapidus Porome by Ted Lapidus. Presentation, I love it, 10 out of 10. Love the bottle, love the glass. I like how it looks. I think it looks classy despite it not being expensive. I like the built-in sprayer. I'm a sucker for that. I think that's cool. I like its distribution. I like that it has other items that um, you know are, are very similar to it. Um, 
performance wise, oh, excuse me. So yeah, presentation, oh, we're gonna go nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. The only thing I can say about it that wouldn't give it a perfect score is that you might not be able to see the juice. I kinda like it when you can see the juice inside. Like, see, same thing for the uh, aftershave bottle. You really can't. You really can't tell. I didn't really show the presentation of that. So that would be the only ding for that rating. Performance, absolute 10 out of 10. It's a beast. There's no question about it. It lasts so long. This is a 10 out of 10 fragrance in terms of performance um, and smell. Objectively, as a, someone who's reviewing the fragrance, I can't just go solely based on what I want to say. I think I have to look at the bigger picture. I can't say perfect, although I love the smell and would give it a 10 out of 10 because I don't think that it's gonna be super mass appealing due to it slightly being of the era and maybe not for everybody. Some people might find it too strong, um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't smell awesome. So if it were not an objective review, I would say 10 out of 10, but I'm gonna to have to give it an 8.5 out of 10 in the smell because I, I maybe out of, if you have 10 people in the room, half of them might like this one a lot. The other half, or you know, two of them might be, yeah, yeah, it smells good, but I wouldn't wear it. Then you have some that are just gonna hate it uh, because of, of how it is and how it performs and what's in it and you know uh, the, the era it came from. So overall rating for Lapis Porum, I would say 8.75 out of 10. So you know, I think it's an excellent fragrance and everybody should pick it up and especially the performance, you can't beat the bang for your buck. So a little bit of a longer review, guys, didn't mean to, to go on and on about this one. I really like it. Take a look at this one again here. So um, thank you so much for watching. Um, thanks for commenting. Uh, you guys have been really, really supportive recently and I, I've gotten a lot of subscribers um, in the past couple weeks. So I like that people are interested in these classic fragrances that I tend to really gravitate towards. So thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your Sunday and goodbye for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.